Hi, my name's Claire Gallagher. I'm the author of Maths the Wacky Way, and I'm here today to show you how to do algebra the wacky way. Now, algebra is always seen to be a really dull subject. Lots of students don't like it when it comes up in the exams. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through some examples of how you solve equations, and we're going to use a famous computer game to help us with this. Now, something that you might see on your exam would be solve 3y plus 7 equals 31. Now, you might look at that and think, hmm, I can kind of work that out myself. If I put 7 in, does that work? No, it doesn't. If I put 8 in, does that work? Oh, yes, it does. Now, the problem that we have with GCSE maths exams, we have a lot of method marks. So it's not just about getting the answer. We have to show how we got the answer. So you need to show the examiner how you worked your way through. Now, if we just came up with the answer, and I can tell you the answer is 8, that's not going to give us full marks in the exam. So let's have a look at a method that we can use for this one and other ones in order to get the right answer. Now, you may have heard of a famous computer game where you control characters. So if your character needs the toilet, you take them to the toilet. OK, you have an icon on your screen and you have to move your character into the bathroom so he can go to the toilet. You watch the icons and if the icon for food goes down, you move your character to the kitchen and therefore he can make himself some food, etc, etc. Now those of you who know, know which computer game I'm talking about will also know there's an icon for socialising. Your character has to meet up with people, he has to socialise every now and then. So what we're going to do with our equation, we're going to treat the character, the one that we care about, that we're controlling, is going to be our y in the example 3y plus 7 equals 31. So we care about y. We want y to become on his own, so we're going to move everything else away from y, and we're going to treat the 3 as another character, the 7 as another character, and the 31 as another character. Now, at the moment, the y, the character that we care about, is with 3, OK? They're together. And while they're together, they're socialising, we're going to leave them there for as long as possible. 7, however, he's on his own. So we need to move everything away from the unknown, everything away from y. However, we need to let y socialise for as long as possible. So 7 is going to go first. Now the only place that we can actually go is to the other side. So 7 is going to go across the equal sign and is going to become on the other side of the equation. Now in the equal sign there's a little man and he sits there and when you pass him he gives you a high five. Now when he gives you a high five you become the opposite of what you were before. So if you were adding you go to the other side, you get high fived, you become subtract. If you were multiplying, you go to the other side, high five, you become a division, etc, etc. The other thing we have to remember is it's always good manners to join the back of the queue. So when we're going to move things to the other side, they're always going to join the back of the queue. So let's go through that with this example. We've already said the 7 is going to move. Now the 7 is currently adding, so it's going to go to the other side and it's going to become a subtract. That then gives us 3y equals 31 take away 7. Now 31 take away 7, well we might as well just say that's 24. So I can tidy that up and I can say 3y equals 24. Now the only thing that can be moved is the 3. Well at the moment the 3 is multiplying the y. What we've got to remember is where you have the 3 and the y together, where there is no sign, that's always multiplying. So the 3 is going to go to the other side, it's going to get a high 5, it was multiplying. When it goes to the other side, it's going to divide, and as we said already, it's got to join the back of the queue. So 24 divided by 3, we then tidy up and we get our 8. So that's the method behind it. Now, when we do this and we get our answer, we can always go back and double check. So if I go back in now and say, well, I thought y was 8, 3 times y, well, that's 3 times 8, that's 24, plus the 7, that gives me 31. So I know that it works. Let's do another one. 
So if we take the equation t divided by 4 take away 2 equals 9. Now this is similar to what we've seen already. We have our unknown t, here's the character that we care about. At the moment, here's being divided by 4. Now they're still together, they're still socialising. We've got 2 that's on his own, and we've got 9 on the other side of the equal sign. So, what are we going to move first? Well, it's the 2, he's on his own. 2 is going to go to the other side, he's going to cross the equal sign, and he gets a high 5. So, 2 was subtracting, he's going to go to the other side and become a positive. So we're going to end up with 9 plus 2 on the other side, 2's joined the back of the queue. Now, like we did before, we can tidy up. So, what we end up with is t divided by 4, still on this side, but then we have an 11 on the other side because we've tidied up. Now, in order to get t on its own, the only thing we can now move is the 4, which is dividing. The 4 is going to go up to the other side, high five by the man in the equal sign, and he will become a multiplication. So, we end up with t equals 11 times 4, and that, of course, gives us 44. Now, if you think back to what we had when we started, let's just check it. So, t, our unknown, we now know is 44. 44 divided by 4, well, that's 11. Take away 2, that's 9. So, it works. Something you might see that's slightly different. We might see a question where we have an unknown on either side. Now, the unknown will hopefully be the same, and if it is the same, we just need to come up with a method that will bring the unknowns together. Now, if we have a look at this equation, we've got solve 8v plus 13 equals 3v plus 38. Now, if that's the case, we've got a v on both sides, and lots of people will say, well, I've always been told to move away from the unknown, but there's two of them, what do I do? Well, V is going to be our character still. So V is the character that we care about, but the number in front of the V is how many pies is eaten. Now, if we ask the question, who ate all the pies? That person is probably going to be the heaviest of the two. So we on this side have 8V. So this V has eaten eight pies. And on the other side, we've got 3V. Well, that V has eaten three pies. So, of course, the character that has eaten eight pies has eaten the most, and we are going to deem them to be the heaviest. Now, if they're the heaviest, they're not going anywhere. So, the 8V is going to stay where he is, and everything else is going to move around him. Now, the side with the 8V is the side that we're going to gather those terms on for V. So, what we need to do is gather all the Vs on that side, and then all the non-Vs will gather on the other side. So the first thing we would need to do is move the 13 away, because the 8V side is purely going to be for the unknown Vs. 13 is going to cross the equal sign. He's going to get a high 5. He was adding, so he's going to go to the other side and become a subtract. So that's all that's happening. We've just got that one movement. But then we've got 3v plus 38 take away 13. Well, let's tidy it up. That's the same as 3v plus 25. So bringing it all together, we have 8v equals 3v plus 25. Now, this is the bit that some students struggle with. We now need to get the v's together. So as it stands, we've still got an 8v over here and a 3v over here. We need this 3v to come and join the 8v. Now, it's going to cross the equal sign, so there's going to be a high five. And what we need to appreciate is that the 3V is actually adding on this side. It's going to come over, and it's going to become a subtract. Now, it's not going to become a divide, because although 3 and V are multiplying each other, we're not trying to separate that. We're not separating the 3 and the V. We're moving the 3V as a whole, which is adding to the other side, where it will subtract. And that's the last movement that we need to do in order to get the sides to be the V side and the non-V side. Now, if we tidy that up, we have 8V take away 3V. Well, that's 5V. 
equals 25 because we've tidied that up already and hopefully you can see that we're back to something that we're used to. So we just now need to get the V on its own. We're going to have to move the 5. Well the 5 is currently multiplying so it will get high fived, it will go to the other side and it will become a divide. So we have 25 divided by 5 which of course gives us 5. Now I hope that helps with your algebra. There are obviously other methods that we could use to take this up a gear, um, which are listed in my book, but hopefully this just helps get the fundamentals right.